Thanks for joining us. So we have with us an elder statesman, the former governor of Kano State, and now a senator, Malam Ibrahim Shekarao. He'll be discussing the situation of insecurity in Nigeria, the call for sacking of the service chiefs, and other related topics. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How Welcome are you? to the show. It's quite a pleasure being here. You've been around recently in media houses, and we've been hearing you talk about this <laughs> issue of insecurity, and we're quite interested in your perspective because um, recently Nigerians yeah. cried out after yeah. the slaughtering of 43 farmers in the yeah. north. Yeah. And many Nigerians had said they have to they had to sack the service chiefs or yeah. the president, yeah. and the president himself had to resign. The, the show of demonstration that yeah. something is changing. Absolutely. In your view. Yeah. Um, how, how symbolic would these acts have been in showing Nigerians that something is being done to counter insurgency in this country? Well, I think, thank you very much. It's a pleasure being here. As you rightly said, I have been here for the next, uh, last couple of days attending mm -hmm. the National Council on Establishment Meeting. In my capacity as chairman of the Senate Committee in charge of Establishment and Public Service. And I just felt I should take the opportunity to share some of these views. Uh, the issue of insecurity is nothing new on the table. It's nothing new on the streets of Nigeria. And uh, we, many very uh, well-meaning Nigerians have been making uh, a lot of uh, noise about it. And uh, it's no longer a secret that there are a lot of things that need to be done. Uh, of course, there has been a calls upon call for the last uh, two or three years that it's high time uh, we review what is commonly called the security architecture in Nigeria. Mm. Uh, you see, people b believe and it's common knowledge that if you keep doing the same thing and you're expecting different results, you're being crazy. Uh, we need to revisit the strategies. Uh, it is no longer a secret that there is no proper synergy between the security agencies. And we appreciate the fact that they also have their own shortcomings. The mm. number is there. They are not sufficient. Uh, the equipping is still uh, not above mm. average. The training is not there. The facilities. Not too long ago, I think either your station or your sister station exposed the training institutions of the police. It's so mm. pathetic. Mm. I mean, you, you can't even train uh, madmen there. Mm. It's, 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 it's terrible. So a lot of these things are getting us uh, a lot of concern. Right. And then more seriously, when lives are being lost, uh, you see, what else? If you are borrowing money to construct roads, electricity, school sources, but for who? For the dead? Yeah. For the dead? I mean, okay. yes, let's, 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 let's cure the lives. So actually, that's why the concern is there. And uh, there's no way you can exonerate the leadership from all of this, mm -hmm. starting from the president and the mm -hmm. service chief. So people mm -hmm. are saying, let's get a change. And the, the thing that I have brought onto the table now is, it's not even the question of whether these service chiefs are performing or not performing. That's another ball game. The fact is they have illegally overstayed. Mm. Yes. Mm. The, 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 the law, there is a common public service scheme of service across the Federation. If you are a public officer on the payroll of government, is 35 years mm -hmm. of service mm -hmm. or 60 years of age. The moment you hit any of this, you go. Uh, so, is the president saying he doesn't know this? Are the advisors saying they, they don't know this? Is mm. the management and service uh, boards right. of the military not knowing this? Let me get a few more questions. If we yeah. so we've seen the North divided across um, views on this insecurity and recent killing of the farmers. Yeah. Some people are on it. The Northern elders from, uh, you know, some are on the side of the salt and saying you know, insecurity in the North is too much. Mm. And some are saying, and the, some are calling outrightly for the president to resign. Exactly. While some are, you know, saying, you know, we shouldn't blame the president or ask for his head for this. We should, you know, look at the governors and whether they have proper welfare for their people enough to stop them from trying to join bandits or, you know, the insurgents. What exactly would you, where is your stand? What, what, is, what do you want well, from you the see, president? My, my stand is that, you see, I quite agree, having been in office before, uh, the issue of 
uh, people's welfare, the issue of security and so on is a collective responsibility, if you like. If you are looking at it globally, it's even every person's responsibility. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to specifics, uh, government has a duty. It has been mentioned uh, time and again that the number one primary duty of any government as per our constitution is to protect lives and properties. If you can't give this, then there is no government. Mm. The number one good governance is to, for you at least to survive. If, if you can't survive, then uh, what services? If you do all of these social services, for who? Uh, if you have the fear of leaving your house to go onto the street, mm -hmm. it's no longer even kidnapping on the street. They go in, knock at your door and carry you along. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's oh. a, so pathetic. So I think there is no way we can remove the head from it. Yeah. And uh, the security agencies, 100% are responsibilities of the federal government. Right. Yeah. The so state government don't own the police, we don't own the SSS, the civil defense, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, a lot of people would say that, um, mm. apart from a few spokespersons yeah. in the north, yeah. you don't see the sort of anger you'd expect from Northerners, you don't see the youths on the streets, you don't see them screaming, you know, and asking for change concerning insurgency and insecurity in that area. But instead, it seems like even the use of the local police is more to attack, you know, like moral, so, you know, like moral um, behavior or misbehavior <laughs> instead of what is constantly putting people, uh, making them displaced, people being murdered, children being orphaned. Where is the voice that people need to hear from the North? Well, I think uh, I wouldn't say that people are not talking. If you are talking of seeing people on the street and so on, that is some of the uh, moral issue. You know, from the uh, spiritual point of view, of course, Islam and Christianity also believe that you need to exercise some patience. We believe all of this is coming from God. But there is a point. Now that we've gotten to that point, people are not talking. You can imagine the elders forum. Uh, in, in, in the north, mm. uh, going it to the final uh, point of saying, let the president go. Mm. He's one of us, and uh, he's part of the north. And uh, it's not because uh, people don't want to talk, we don't want to go into the streets to fight, to uh, demonstrate. It's just one out of all of these issues. Many of us have been meeting the respective uh, people, appointees of Mr. President that are in charge of this, in charge of that, and uh, the National Assembly, uh, which constitutes 57 of us from the north, mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is quite a large number. Yeah. We've been meeting, resolutions have been passed, the leadership of the National Assembly have been meeting the presidency. Uh, if you watch the proceedings last Tuesday, uh, it was... Uh, uh, fire on the mountain. Yeah. The people, in fact, the, the Senate President spoke our mind when he said, look, we are advising Mr. President to take resolutions more seriously. Technically, resolutions of the National Assembly or any assembly is advisory. Yeah. But advisory sometimes, uh, I can say, please give me your phone if I, uh, I'm your boss. I said, give me this phone. This is it, being courteous, so we have been advising. But when the things are now on ground and we discover that it is getting out of hand, right. you can't give any more excuses. Exactly. Yeah, so have to let let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation with our guests. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have with us Senator Malam Ibrahim Shekarao on the, on, the, on the show. Now, I'd like us to go into the matter of restructuring because many have called for yeah. restructuring. The, the, the government have told us that the reason why it's so difficult because there are different definitions of restructuring. What restructuring is to you in the north is different from what it is to the south. That there's no clear consensus on what restructuring should be. In your view, would you say that this season we had the hashtag answers, we have the issue of insecurity? Is the time for the government to begin to look in seriously into the matter of insecurity of restructuring? Did you? Well, I think uh, I quite agree that there are a number of indices that compels us to go back to the table and uh, discuss this uh, restructuring, as you said. And I also hold the view that there are as many interpretations of restructuring as the number of people pro uh, propagating it. 
uh, to very many, it means uh, resource control, some uh, restructuring the, uh, the polity, the structure of government, and so on and so forth. Uh, I think I always argue that Nigeria had always been a product of restructure. Right from our amalgamation over 100 years ago between the North and the Southern Protectorate, we passed through a number of restructuring, be it with the military or the civilian. Uh, we were on the parliamentary system, the military came, it was restructured right from uh, the Civil War. Uh, we were having the regions, regional governments, the military changed it to states. That was restructuring, states were increasing. There was a review of the uh, native authority governments to the local government review. And what, so we've been into restructuring and I see nothing wrong okay. in still continuing to discuss. Uh, it's in our uh, move to find a solution to persisting problems. So I quite agree, and I think government should be the main driver of these restructuring ideas. Right. You see, uh, government has to coordinate it. Left to me, government should coordinate. In 2014, uh, the then government and uh, President uh, Jonathan, there was the national conference. The reports were there. Not too long, sometime last year or two years ago, the the government of APC set up, or the party itself set up a committee to review, to come up with proposals of uh, the restructuring. I think it's headed by the uh, governor of Kaduna State. A lot of proposals were made. We're here to see the report and the outcome of that. So, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that I support the issue of restructuring. Uh, to me, restructuring right. meaning let's get together and talk okay. Okay. and see what, how do we move Nigeria forward. Right. You know, in ex okay, sorry, in explaining, you said this yeah. is a move that has to be spearheaded by the but federal go government. Yeah. For many yeah. of us, mm. we feel the, fe uh, um, the federal government is the executive and the legislature. Yeah. So who is this federal government you're speaking of? Is it not the Senate and the legislature mm -hmm. having the conversation? And what do you think the general um, attitude is from the North? Because, you know, usually a lot of people feel we hear the South, but we don't really understand or hear the North. So I want to... No, 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 no. I, a lot of us have been talking. You see, when you say the South, the North, uh, of course, you'll, you'll agree with me that the South has the privilege of more on the media outfit. So you can okay. claim to have yet to have had the South more. But we're also talking. We've been propagating this. Uh, left to me, there is nothing wrong. But government missionaries have to bring in people. We've had this in the past. We've had so many constitutional conferences, uh, so many committees to review uh, constitution. We passed through all these things. That's why I said the main driver of the discussion of restructuring has to be government. You see uh, that you bring in a number of different interest groups. Some do argue that uh, when you have a national assembly, why do you have to call people to do that? Right now, we're in the process of doing a lot of amendments into the Constitution. But these amendments are just uh, to make easy operations of the Constitution. Mm. But substantially, we're talking of restructuring. Some people are saying, look, let's go back to parliamentary mm. uh, system. <laughs> this system is too expensive mm -hmm. and right. so on. Let's uh, dissolve local governments mm. and retain only the state. Some are saying abolish the state, go back to local governments. Mm. Some are now even saying let's have the geopolitical zones. Most of what we do now are built on the geopolitical zone, the mm. six of them. But it's not even in the constitution. So you find this is another restructuring. Mm. Let it's me clear. let Niman throw in a question. Um, okay. um, the APC, you know, being mm. the party in power, yeah. have been unable to put his house in order. Presently, they're in court, you know, they've not been able to have a national conference. Some people have alleged that there are sides within mm. the, the, the party. party. Some people are trying to hold on to power. Some mm. are calling for, you know, a proper sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, the Minister for Works and mm. Housing mm. recently said, you know, stick to your promise and mm. let there be, you know, a proper sharing. What's your mm. take? Well, I on think. Uh, Talking about the party, I agree, it's, and it's nothing new when you have some scabbles in, within the party. There were crises in the leadership which led to the dissolution of the national uh, leadership, the National Working Committee, 
and a caretaker committee is in place now. We're going to do the congresses at the state level that will culminate into the convention. All the parties are experiencing all of these things. So there's nothing new. And when you are heading into a convention, you know, interest will come. And you see, by the regulations of INEC, any registered party must have its national executive committee constituted with members of not less than two-thirds of Nigerian states. That's a minimum of 25 states. This is what compels most of the parties, or really all of them, to, to do the zoning of the positions. And that is where the intrigues will come in, yeah. uh, which zone takes chairman, which one takes secretary, which one takes this, which one takes that. And that, that is nothing new. We expect as the convention is coming, you will hear of this. And a is lot there, of people... Are they planning to not stick to that sharing formula? Is there an agreement to that initially? Well, these are things that possible? can be reviewed. Uh, somehow along your question, you built in uh, an issue that probably you didn't say properly, the issue of rotational leadership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. You see, in APC, PDP has rotational constitutional provision. Uh, you rotate the presidency between the north and the south. It's there in the PDP. But in APC, it's not there. But whether it is there or not, I always argue that there is always the constitution of common sense, a sense of trying to carry everybody along, oh, right. the sense of giving everybody sense of belonging. This does not mean you go for mediocres. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, we go for the correct and the, the right candidates. There is no one single state in Nigeria today where you don't have hundreds of capable people that can be presidents of exactly. Nigeria. We have them. So we have a pool of responsible, capable people to choose from. So we need, we need not to kill ourselves in uh, uh, where it goes. The important thing, if the round table discussion in a given party decides, okay, it goes to A today, tomorrow it goes to B, the time goes to C, and so on, there's nothing wrong with that. If we agree on going to <coughs> A, we go to A and identify yeah. from the common pool, from the yeah. capable people, and we choose. I am for fairness in, in terms of leadership. Right. Most of us, we are trying to carry everybody along yeah. in spite of our diversity. Mm -hmm. If you don't do that, there is going to be a build-up into wrong perception mm -hmm. that some people are not being considered. Let me come to the issue of um, Sharia, because yes. um, yeah. you brought Sharia into Kano State. And um, recently, a 13-year-old child was convicted and is about to be going to prison for life. Somebody else, I think, was um, sentenced to yeah, death. The musician. Uh, musician. Uh, in your view, especially with international outcry on against the Sharia, do you Smart. think um, it's sustainable Sharia in in the north? And do you think it's time for us to begin to review? Well, I, I, I think there is, uh, from what you've said, there is a lot of ignorance on what Sharia is all about. You see, there is the penal code consisting the issue of offenses and punishment. This is nothing new. It has been there right from uh, the time of uh, before independence. And uh, if you go into history of the way the Europeans came in, starting from the coastal area and so on and so on, the, the, in the, the indirect rule, before they came, because before the Western system of governance came in, we have the Islamic system of government. So all our laws and rules are largely uh, Islamic based. So the sh we, when you talk of uh, capital punishments, mm. offenses and punishment, this, this has been there for hundreds of years. So it's not that uh, my government brought Sharia also, it's there. It has been there, the offenses and so on. All we did. You see, uh, I always interpret the Sharia we brought in, in in terms of social justice being godly in every respect. It was nothing new. Uh, after all, how many people commit offenses that we were not going to the courts? All we are after is to make sure there is fairness, there is social justice in the system. But in 13-year-old... If 13 years about to be sentenced, do you think well, that's... Well, this is... Uh, I, I'm not competent to speak about that because that mm. is a matter of the law okay. mm. in the courts. And the Sharia laws, the Sharia courts, uh, are not final courts. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Sharia courts, we have Sharia appeal courts. Okay. 
then they can go to the National Appeal Court up to Supreme Court. So it's, 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 okay. I see nothing to worry, really. The, the system has taken care of the fairness to all. Right. Uh, so these are matters of uh, jurisprudence. Mm. The law books are there. The judgment are passed in accordance with the interpretation by the judge. Mm. And uh, if you're not satisfied with the judgment, there is no Sharia court that has a final mm. say. Okay. You move, there are chains. Right. We have appeal courts right. for the Sharia and so on and so forth. Okay. So I think. His bar policy in Kano was yeah. created for, you know, to enforce religious um, abuse and, you know, things that do not conform with the morals of the society. Yeah. And it's been largely effective. Why have the North not copied such an example when it comes to the general insecurity in the North? where you have bandits coming to people's houses now to kidnap them, or do something like the Southwest proposed recently, the Amotiko? Well, I think uh, it's one of our success story in Kano. Uh, I don't want to call it Hizba police, but it was community policing. Mm -hmm. uh, the name doesn't matter. You either call it Hizba, you call it Amotiko, you call it whatever. The important thing is we created community policing and for the, all the years we were there, up to today, Yisba is playing a very critical role. And unless you allow people to police themselves, all these uh, vices will not mm. go. Exactly. So allow people, what we did in the Hisba, we recruited 20 Hisba guards in every ward. Um, Kano has about 884 wards. We ended up with about 10,000 strengths of the Hisba. They are serving in their localities. You know, it's a ward is a small community. Mm -hmm. You know everybody there. So if you make it, we all we did was organize it. We promulgated the law to allow it to exist. In fact, uh, the current police leadership has to borrow from what we have done because it's a success story. Mm. Uh, and that's why we are now saying let every state have community policing. Mm. It's not the policing that will carry guns, will carry ammunitions and so on, but allowing people to monitor themselves. Okay. And you don't have to carry one uh, motocone from uh, uh, local government A to local right. government B. The purpose is defeated. Right. So, I am for community policing, okay. and unless we do that, we will not get All over right. some of these right. issues. Okay, so you know when when you talk about policy and um, all the plans that have been made legislatively, it shows that you know they ha a lot of thought is given uh, is given to it, and. Yeah from people of great education. But the North is largely accused of being um, one of the high, has, has, highest number of um, illiteracy, illiteracy. Uh, out of school children. What is the definite mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. for the North mm -hmm. concerning education? Now, you see, uh, I think uh, you, the, 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 you have the problem of history of education. Most people believe that the North is educationally backward because of Islam, because of our rigidness not to go to school. The history of education, as I told you, it started from the coastal areas. The Europeans that came to Nigeria through the waters did not come to give us education, slave trading came. The first schools were meant to train church uh, interpreters and so on. That's how it started. Before the Europeans came up to the north, North had Islam for over 700 years, and there was a system of leadership. So they resisted. Our forefathers resisted the missionaries because they were there for conversion. And that was what led to the indirect rule, and that was the agreement was, okay, uh, we will not touch any of your religious aspects, your schooling, and so on. So it's not that the North didn't want to go to school, the challenges, population, and so on. Uh, we have the Quranic schools, the Islamia schools, in hundreds of thousands of them. Yeah. And uh, in virtually every community you find Islamia schools, Quranic schools, you have school proprietors there. All we're trying to do now is to see how we can uh, integrate the so-called Western system. There's nothing like Western education. Western system of education and the Islamic system of education trying to integrate the mm. two. And when you come to integrate a system that has been there for 800 years, 
with a system that is less than 100 years old, you can imagine how long the journey would be. Mm. So, that's so it's not that in the South there are better schools or better education and so on. Uh, no, we're talking uh, about no, plants. The yeah, schools, better. But what we're, that, I'm coming to that. Mm. All I'm saying is that, for example, in my tenure in eight years, I established over 400 junior secondary schools. So a lot of this is being done. I and have to run, so unfortunately yeah. we run out of time, but there was an important yeah. question I had to ask you, but I want you to be very direct about it. Yeah. As an APC chieftain, yeah. is, is power coming back to the South in 2023? Well, you see, I would not want to speak for APC. I'm, of course, a senior member of APC. Uh, as I told you earlier on, in the APC constitution, there isn't a zoning aspect. But as I said, there is the common sense of fairness to all. So the question of which region, which zone should take the presidency is a collective decision of the party, as okay. a party. We'll take, your, we'll, take that, we'll take that response. Unfortunately, that's all we can take on the show. Thank, thank you, you very much, thank you very much. Thank for you. joining us. It's thank been you. an interesting day. Have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye for now. Thank you.